Hi everyone. In this level design case study, I'm going to go through the first mission of Dishonored, a first-person stealth action-adventure game developed by Arcane Studios. I'll be talking about how the player is guided throughout the mission and the mechanics the players are introduced to during this run. The player first starts off in the small prison cell after a cutscene. They are given food and a message from a friend with a key to unlock the cell. The player then walks out into a wider, more lit area. The designers have done a great job using a light as a guide to the player throughout this mission. For instance, on the right of the room is a low lit area with an inaccessible door, but it does give a sneak peek of the area that the player will get to eventually. And in the main area, there's a light right over the weapon you are given, and then a small light right above the door the player must go through next. In the next room is a player's first encounter with an enemy. A pop-up appears to let the player know that they're given an option of whether to assassinate the enemy, render them unconscious, or just completely slip past them. The obstacles, as well as unlit areas like the one off to the side, gives the player the feeling of being stealthy, of lurking in the shadows. Giving the player these choices in a way empowers them that they can easily end or spare the lives of their enemies. Towards the next door lit by another light, before even coming through the door, there is a subtle guidance of an obstacle that obstructs half the room that the player sees first, and it directs their line of vision to the left wall while they can acquire the pistol. When the player goes through, they come across ledges color-coded by the red, signifying that they can vault over these. You can also see that the second ledge is higher than the other, and that lets the player know that you can vault to a ledge that's higher than the player themselves. There's also a door on the right that's locked, which forces the player to actually do the action. Doing so will give them a small reward of a health elixir, some snacks, and some coin. Heading up the stairs, the player, if they didn't check the door next to the ledges, are introduced to the option of looking through the keyhole, allowing the player to plan their next move. Once through the door, there's an enemy of the key and a lit up sign directing the player where to go. Here, the player is again in a narrow pathway that opens up to a bigger room. The yard door is locked and the player has to proceed into the interrogation room if not already drawn in by how lit up the door is. Inside there is a green desk lamp that shines over an interactable object. This gives a hint to the player that there are things they can do under the lamps like these. After obtaining the explosive, the player is then able to go through the yard door out onto the prison yard. This small section does a good job highlighting the paths that the player can choose to go through, either on the sides through the dark or fight the enemies right in the middle. Up the stairs to the next room, the player has to get through the hall door before planting the explosive on the main door. This is another good example of giving the player a choice on how to approach the situation. They can either 1. Go through the control room and open the door with a handle, which is lit by a green lamp. Or 2. There's a ledge marked by a red line as well as a red light and pipe, bypassing the enemies and going over the door, as well as bypassing the next enemies and planting the explosive. Once the player jumps down to the sewers, they are introduced to a new threat, rats. They can't interact with them at first, but they are introduced to the fact that a group of rats like that are able to kill, giving the player another enemy to worry about, and ultimately used to their advantage as well. Another thing to point out is that the light guidance provided by the big prison lights has now changed to being small lamps. Shortly after, a narrow path opens to the main sewer, and here the rats are an actual threat to the player now that no doors are blocking them. Except, a dead body is conveniently placed a few feet in front of the player and the rats go after that instead, which lets the player know that they'll ignore them if the rats are eating a dead body already. The player again is given a choice to find a route past the rats, or they can actually kill them instead if they choose to. A small light guides the player under a small underwater tunnel where it opens up 
to another bigger section. When they climb up the stairs, they are faced with a red wheel and a red gate, which is pretty straightforward on what the player is asked to do. After going across a small connecting room, it opens to a wider room, again keeping with the small to large room spacing. This room introduces the player to interacting with a different way with the rats. Before, the player was able to know that a group of rats can kill and that they feast on dead bodies. This room adds both of those together for a player to use to allow them to open yet another red gate with a red wheel to continue through another narrow space into a larger space again. Here the player is introduced to a chain which they can climb and are presented with another threat, traps and tripwires. In this sewer section, the player is presented again with multiple routes to proceed forward. Climbable ledges and going through the middle are options to take to disable and loot the traps if the player chooses, or completely skip. Before continuing, the player acquires a crossbow from their friend. Then opening the door prompts the player to learn how to slide, and if they don't slide there's no easy way to avoid the tripwire. Past the tripwire leads them to a small puzzle in the form of a safe with a code which is accessible if the player reads the note next to it and looks for the code. This minigame the designers put in pushes the player to explore a bit, promptly rewarding them on exploration. In the last section of the sewer, the player is introduced to the drop assassination mechanic, opening up more options on how to assassinate their enemies. Then through the rest of the sewer, the player is provided with multiple routes to get to the end of the sewers. They can either kill or knock out the enemies, swim underwater, go above the pipes, or any combination of them. After that, they enter through a narrow pathway and opens up where the player can finally see the sky again. And after one last narrow path, the player is greeted by the landscape. The river, the hills, the buildings in the distance, and a cloudy sky with a covered sun. The designers of the game did a great job creating an introductory level. Using a lot of lights, color coding, and obstacles, they were able to guide the player through the mission without much confusion. The threats and challenges were set up to become a little more complicated towards the end, making sure the player thinks through their playstyle. The balance of introducing the mechanics was good, and it wasn't rushed, and it made sense in how they fit within the level.